Hi, Flying Doctor here once again. Hope you're okay flying the autopilot. Sorry, yeah, autopilot on the H145 Autobus produced by Hyper Performance Group. Whizzing along here just from North Wales at 140 knots in autopilot. I've set the speed, I've set the heading, and basically I'm looking for some hilly terrain just to uh, demonstrate uh, the difference between altitude and uh, CR.HT, which says cruise height actually, but the first thing to get into your head is that it's an, uh, a radio controlled um, set height constantly above the terrain. So in other words, if the terrain is undulating below you, um, the helicopter will track the terrain and will uh, ascend and descend to retain a common altitude uh, height above terrain, okay, which is different from altitude setting. An altitude setting, say, if you want to fly at 5,000 feet, it's 5,000 feet above sea level, irrespective of what the land happens to be doing. We're some way away uh, from the moment, uh, but I'll just uh, talk you through uh, one or two things that I've sort of discovered with this. Firstly, um, uh, the uh, if we just look closely here, uh, you can get an indication of you've got two different readouts here, which is really helpful. Um, the first thing is, well, uh, two different readouts in, in relation to altitude. Okay, so this central column, uh, which is fixed at 600 feet, is the altitude that we're flying at, that we're sat at at the moment. Okay, 600 feet above sea level. You can see, though, that we have a separate altitude readout here. And this is indicating, well, hang on, 4,500, what, coming? Yeah, 4,500 feet. Sorry, four, 450 metres. Four, sorry. Not even metres, sorry, it's getting late anyway. So, um, say 450 feet, 500, just approaching 500 feet. So a difference between the two, and that is simply that the 600 is the altimeter we set, and this very helpfully is giving some measure of actually the height that we are above the terrain, which is something different, like height above ground. Okay, so uh, things are going to get hopefully a little bit more exciting in a moment. Uh, so when we set uh, CRHT, we're actually setting... Um, for the height above ground and we can control that. Looking at the manual, um, it's designed pr primarily for flying over water and it's not possible to implement it over I think 2,200 feet. That was a recent uh, change that just came uh, through. Apart from that, what I have learned is that you need to treat this with respect. <laughs> Don't fly at uh, sort of 90 knots into a mountain, although I have tested it to see exactly uh, what it will do. Also, I tend to, when I'm in autopilot, I don't know if it's the right thing to do. I tend to put the um, collective to maximum power, so to, to so to enable the autopilot to be able to deliver maximum power to retain uh, the attitude itself. I'm going to slow right now. My experience has been that if I slow right down uh, to around about 80 knots, then we're somewhere where it's much easier to fly and for the autopilot to make adjustments. Uh, using the radio altitude fix. So there we go, you can see um, the air spring dropping now. Uh, but actually it's that bottom number we're after. I've slowed it right down to about 40. We're off the scale, but I'm going to increase it. There we go, let's, let's take it to 80. Now one thing that I have found, and I'm not sure if this is related, um, is that there is a little marker here. Can you see the white and red band um, okay well, it's actually supposed to be I think it's supposed to be yellow and red yes it's yellow and red if I look really carefully okay and oh grounds coming up and uh, effectively if I'm below that well below that I've entered I've had less problems with having to intervene under CRHT let's just flick to the CRHT um, mode right now there you go. And you can see that it's fixed. If you look at this right-hand column, in, well, the first right-hand column from the middle, so to speak, you'll see that we are, we've are we got a little green marker just below 400 um, feet. And uh, you can see um, how the helicopter is now trying to track that. We can increase that distance. You can see that there's this uh, marker here. If we're using the tablet which I like to do because it's easier to demonstrate that that will now increase to allow 600 feet um, above uh, cruise height now my experience as I say is that if you go too fast uh, if you don't have the autopilot in on full power 
Um, so if you don't have the uh, collective uh, fully extended, so it's giving full power, um, you, you the, the, the helicopter doesn't have what it needs in order to retain the autopilot height. But as you can see here, look, you can see the difference here. So we are actually approaching, well, between, we're, we'll call that 1,500 feet above sea level. But in fact, we're actually just around about 600 feet um, above ground. And uh, that's what we're trying to maintain. So as the autopilot is looking to maintain this, we're seeing that the altitude is increasing. And you can see that slowly happening now. Um, uh, there we go, because this little really, see that little line that's moving there? This is the, um, uh, ver this is the vertical speed. So the vertical speed is coming up as the helicopter is increasing. Uh, its altitude in order to retain or try and retain. You can see it's struggling to do that there. Um, I'm finding on average that uh, depending on what the, you, you put the helicopter through, it can be around about even 100 feet either side of what you've um, selected. But you can see there that um, the helicopter is climbing. And there's the climb and uh, the altitude increasing. So uh, I've had some fun and games with this. Um, uh, I've got to do a little bit more work to find out what kind of speeds are workable. Uh, there's no limits that seem to be applied apart from the altitude limit for CRHT in the manual. And there's very little information. I'm struggling to find an Airbus manual, uh, manual anyway. So I just uh, hope that you find that um, helpful. It's a lovely little mode because um, it allows you when you're flying over scenery to retain the same height above the terrain and therefore you don't sort of continue you don't lose perspective over the terrain if you suddenly get a valley or something like that so I just um, hope that's um, helpful for you take care stay safe folks and any comments feel free pop them in the comments section do subscribe once again I'm not practicing promising to be an expert on this certainly not just somebody learning on my way ahead so if you see something and think actually what he doesn't know is this um, that's all really uh, helpful to see. I have promised somebody that we would look at Nav 1 and Nav 2 modes and why you would use those and how you switch between the two if, for example, you are following a course, a flight plan via GPS, and then you want to land an ILS approach, which is a whole different world to look at. Um, you might want to switch over from, say, GPS to NAV1, where NAV1 you would have programmed in um, the ILS frequency. Uh, so this, I've got to do quite a lot of work to that to get my head around what's happening there. But apart from that, happy flying.